What's up guys, my name is Nicknubber here for Troubleshoots and today we're going through a pretty good video for you if you're trying to move very large files from one computer to another over a network that's preferably gigabit or possibly even 10 gigabit if your infrastructure actually allows that. So basically we're all familiar with using USBs etc etc to transfer files but maybe you're like me and you need to transfer a very big file and this file over here that I'm trying to transfer is actually just under 50 gigabytes. Now unfortunately I'm not going to go through the effort of plugging in an external hard disk, copying it to it and copying from it because in fact that's a hell of a lot slower than the method that I'm going to show you in this video here. And this video will show you how to move files over the network. Now, of course, there's lots of ways. And the thing that I use to control my laptop from my main PC, Multiplicity from Stardock, where I can just move my cursor over to the side. Boom, I'm controlling my laptop. Unfortunately, that seems to cap out at about 80 megabytes per second and doesn't fully utilize my gigabit network connection from my PC to my laptop. So we're going to be going through a very popular FTP piece of software and the server, which will be a FileZilla. So if you've ever hosted servers using game servers or any sort of file transfer between you and a website, you've probably used FileZilla before. And I won't go too into depth with this just because we're going to set up a really simple server without a huge amount of security, just so we can move a large file from this main PC to my laptop, basically utilizing my full internet speed. So I'll be cutting between my laptop and my main PC, and I'll try to make sure I tell you when I'm doing that. Here I'm on my main PC where I'm hosting the file. It doesn't really matter which side you put the server on because you can move files back and forth, but just keep that in mind. You'll need a FileZilla client on one of your PCs and a FileZilla host or server on your other PC. How exactly do we go about doing that? Well, without going through too much, you'll be heading across to filezilla-project.org or clicking the link down in the description below, and you'll be downloading both the FileZilla client and FileZilla server. I'll hold control and click on both of these links to open them in new tabs, respectively. You can, of course, also right-click, open a new tab. We'll download the client and we'll install it onto one of our computers. So I'll just go download and download the normal free one, and I'll go ahead and download the server as well that we'll put on my laptop. Doesn't matter which way you put these around, you just need the server on one and the client on the other. So of course, once you download the a client, you'll be opening it like this, and you'll be going through the installation. So for me, I'll go, I agree, and I've already installed it, so this will probably give you different options, but I'll just go next, all users, next, next, and then next, and it should be installing. And there we go, hit finish, and boop, there goes FileZilla on my computer. Super simple installation with basically no hassle. I'm going to go ahead and copy the server across to my laptop and I'll be showing you what I'm doing there. And there we go, I'm now on my laptop and I have the FileZilla server over here. So I'm just going to double click on it, hit yes, I agree, make sure these are ticked, you don't need the source code checked. Next, you can leave this as default, next. And here's where things get a little bit interesting. So if you know exactly what you're doing, you might choose to install as a service to automatically start with Windows, or you can choose to start it manually. For me, I'll only be starting it when I transfer files back and forth. So I'll just go start it manually. Then the port down below isn't too important, but we'll need to remember this for later. So we'll go ahead and copy it, and we'll save it into a notepad file just for a later reference. Next up, we'll be hitting next, and install. Close. And the server has now started, localhost 14147. We'll go ahead and hit connect. You might get an error over here, but you can safely ignore that. Then at the very top, you see a computer with a person standing in front of it. That is the user control panel where we can change and add users, shared folders, which is the folders we can access from the client, speed limits, and an IP filter, which we won't be going through today. The next one across is the group manager, which we won't be using as well. So next up, we'll be clicking the single head one, general, users, add, and we'll just give it a name. So I'll say ASDF, just for quick remembering, and we'll leave the group as none. Okay, password check, and ASDF here as well. Of course, you can enter a username and a password of your choice, preferably not so simple, but if you just want to transfer files back and forth and only have the server running when you're on a trusted network, make sure you do not have that automatic one checked, then we'll go ahead and leave this as is. Shared folders is where we get to choose what folder we'll be sharing from our server computer, in my case, my laptop, to my desktop computer where I can add and remove files. So we'll simply hit add, and we'll select the folder that we want. I'll choose my desktop, and I'll hit OK. I'll make sure read is allowed, write, delete, and append, as well as directory create and delete. So I'll check all of these, 
and then make sure I have this directory selected and click set as home directory. Of course, you don't need to do this if it already has an H next to it. Basically, this is where your computer will go when you connect to this server. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we've successfully created our server. Next up, we need to temporarily disable the firewall, or we need to allow port 14147 through. Of course, if you're gonna do this temporarily just for file transfer, then temporarily disabling your firewall is more than enough. Of course, if you want this as a more permanent solution and you want to use it such as a NAS, a network attached storage, then you'll need to do this properly and allow the port through your firewall or antivirus of choice. For me, I'm just copying one single file, so I'll temporarily disable my firewall. I'll hit start and type in firewall. Then I'll go to the Windows Defender firewall. Then I'll go to turn Windows Defender firewall on or off. And I'll just go turn Windows Defender firewall off as well as here. Remember this is temporary and I'll be coming back here to turn it on when we're done with moving our files. So now that we got this far, all we need is the IP address of our computer that we're gonna copy files to, the one with the server installed on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold start and press R and then type in CMD and hit enter. Then we'll be typing in IP config, one word, so IP C O N F I G, and hitting enter. We'll scroll up and look for our Ethernet adapter, Ethernet. If it's named something else or you're using wireless, of course, look for that. We're looking for our IPv4 address and we'll go ahead and copy it out of here by selecting it and then right clicking to copy. Then we'll simply paste it into our notepad so we can remember for later. You can close that as CMD now and we'll be heading across to our main PC with the client installed on it. Back in our main PC, under the host, we'll go ahead and paste in our IP address of our laptop. So 192.168.1.5, username, the same one we created earlier, so ASDF and password ASDF. And then we'll hit quick connect. And there we have it. We are now connected to our laptop and you can see my desktop files over here. If I were to do a file operation, it would be mirrored on my laptop. So let's go ahead and move across that big file. Here I have this 50 gig file. All we need to really do is drag and drop from a folder into the right hand side, which says remote site at the very top and putting it in the right folder. So for me, I'm just adding it to my desktop, drag, drop, and there we have it. It's copying at a full 106 megabytes per second. Opening up Task Manager, you can see that it's around 800 to 900 megabits per second, which is almost a full gigabit. So this is fully utilizing my network connection to my laptop. Of course, there's little tweaks and optimizations that you can do, but you don't need to worry about it. Flipping back to my laptop, you can see a bunch of information over here saying that we connected and that we started transferring a file. You can also see it over here. Unfortunately, you probably won't be able to hear, but my laptop fan has spun up quite a bit. Opening up Task Manager, you can probably see it's a little bit laggy. We're reaching a full 914 megabits per second, and it is completely utilizing my gigabit connection to my laptop. Great. So of course, moving back to my main PC, we can move a file from our remote computer to our local computer by dragging and dropping from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Here, I've navigated to see a user's Technobo desktop temp, which I've actually misspelt, but you can of course go to any folder you want by using the file browser up here or by clicking on a folder and navigating this way. So to demonstrate moving a file, we can simply just drag and drop across and it copies basically instantly if it's a tiny file, etc., etc. Opening up the temp file that I created, you can see the file over here. So it's super simple and this is basically how you would go ahead and edit websites, dragging and dropping to or dragging and dropping from the remote host. Of course, the laptop in this case is my remote host. So copying this 50 gigabyte file has gone from a multiple hour operation to probably just a couple of minutes. As you can see, it's elapsed for two and it's only got five left. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this to finish and that's about it. This has been a super simple tutorial on how to move large files from your desktop to your laptop, from one computer to another, and a super simple crash course for the FileZilla client and the server. Of course, if you want to save this, you're going to have to hit Control S to bring up the Sites Manager. I've got my ones hidden over here, but what we'll be doing is we'll be hitting New Site. We can, of course, copy the host, username, and password across. So, username, password, and we can go ahead and hit OK. This will save it into your bookmarks over here. And to simply access it, we can hit Control S and it will be right here waiting for us. I didn't hit OK, so it hasn't saved, but that's where it should be. All you need to do to reconnect is to double click on that. Of course, once you've moved a file across, you should go ahead and re-enable your firewall on your host computer, the one with the server installed, to make sure it's nice and secure. 
Of course, if you want a more permanent solution, you'll have to go ahead and add an exception for the FileZilla server, as well as the ports that it uses, but I won't be going into that here. In fact, just adding an exception for the server file itself should be more than enough. Anyways, my name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I hope this helped you, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!